right, y'all. We are live. That's what it says, anyway. <laughs> Welcome to Pure Dog Talks Live at 5. I am your host, Laura Reeves, and we're having some, you know, technical things, shockingly enough. But we are going to get to do show and tell, which is really, really cool. And while everybody's hopping on, I just wanted to welcome everybody. Um, got a couple items for the good of the order. Look at me, I'm, I'm using paper. Just so you know, this is paper. Here in the ancient universe, we had written things on dead trees. So, <laughs> couple items. There is a survey, I mentioned it in the podcast this week. This survey is available to you on puredogtalk.com. Very important survey. You win lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of goodies if you take the survey, so or at least a chance for the goodies. So hop on puredogtalk.com. Right at the top in the bar, it says, we want to hear your voice. Click that. Take the survey. Very excited about that. Also, I have been invited to be involved in something called Decoding Your Canine. It's a summit, virtual summit. Uh, you'll be getting information in your email, on the Facebook page, all kinds of stuff about that. Sign up, check it out. Should be super, super, super exciting. Um, so there's that. Patrons, patrons, if you haven't joined the patrons yet, um, there seems to be some sometimes miscommunication. In order to join our patrons, you do need to contribute dollars. Dollars are what the makes the, the MP3s keep rolling around here. And um, the money from the patrons is used exclusively for paying our overhead, paying the producer, paying the website, paying the bills. It does not come to yours truly, but it does go to pay the bills. And we appreciate it tremendously. Um, if you are so inclined to join our patrons, go to the website, go to puredogtalk.com backslash patron, and you can pick your amount that you would like to give. You can select all the different options that you have, pay monthly, pay annually, whatever. It's very cool. Get to join our Pure Dog Talk patrons page. Um, if you are in the all access group, that means you have access to a huge number of really amazing dog people in the single best dog community in the sport today. No doubt. Always remember your purpose is our passion. That's why we do this. Again, check it out. PureDogTalk.com. Not everybody I know um, is a regular user of the website. Y'all just listen on iTunes, whatever. Check it out. It's well worth it. That's where all the archived episodes are. Um, understand that of the 500 and I don't even know, I have no idea, 70 something episodes we have, only about 250 of them are available to you on like iTunes or Spotify or whatever. If you want to get the archived episodes, you either have to buy the audio book, which doesn't make me sad. <laughs> or use the uh, archived, there's a search function, top of the website. All right, you guys, today, today we are talking about grooming. What's in my tack box? Now, my tack box is a little rusty, it's a little bit out of date, but I thought I'd take you on a little tour of that. And I'll also, if we have time, introduce you to one of the crew here at the Scotia Kennel and let you meet one of the dogs and see some of the grooming systems that we can do. All right, understand also that I am a little bit limited for ability to interact with Facebook. I have my friend and cohort here, Stacy. Stacy is going to shout out from the Facebook page if there's a question that needs answered and she will read it to me from the Facebook page and I will answer it for you live. So this is, like I say, we're like stretching our wings. We are totally out of bounds here. You ready? Go. All right. <clears throat> we have here the contents of my tack box, right? I think everybody can see that. Yeah, we can see just, there we go. Good. Um, there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of things to go through, 
All right, this is, this is sort of grooming 101. I want you guys to understand that. If you want fancy dancy poodle grooming, um, Leading Edge Dog Show Academy can help you with that. Allison can take you through poodle grooming. I'm gonna take you through dog grooming 101. So we're gonna start with some of the most important things that you can have. Shampoo. Everybody has a favorite product, right? I have several. I am an enormous fan of the Pure Paws products. So I'm gonna take some of these up here where you can see them. I am so bad at this camera thing. There you go. Pure Paws, Amplify. This is for your double coated dogs, right? You see it? It's great stuff. Brilliant, nope, I cannot get this right. Brilliant Conditioner. This is another phenomenal product, particularly if you have white dogs. Um, if you have light colored dogs, these Pure Paws products are amazeballs, okay? A couple more of my favorites. A couple more of my favorites in the shampoo category. There you go, white. All right, see that? Pure Paws, this stuff is amazing on the whites on your dogs that have high whites, on your white dogs, on whatever it is. The important and most important thing to remember, if you are using any kind of whitening shampoo, you must, and I cannot emphasize enough, must condition after you bathe. Um, and for conditioner and shampoo, another product that I'm quite happy with, our good friend, Janice, the Barker, this is the conditioner. They also have a shampoo. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous product. Check it out if you have not. Um, here's one for those of you, again, with white dogs or PS beards. All of us with bearded dogs. Another Pure Paws product for, if I could only just go the right way. This is the enzyme treatment spray. Unfortunately, Jen is telling us that she learned last weekend Pure Paws is being discontinued. Oh my God! If you have it, keep it. Keep it forever. Oh my God, no, that's terrible. Um, Flush Puppy is another vendor that I have always enjoyed, if that is really, really true. Um, Plush Puppy, you can see the brand name here. This happens to be Swishy Coat. This is a product that you'll use for any of your drop-coated breeds, anything with long hair, that you want the hair to fall nicely in a nice uh, straight line, but not be um, sticky, right? You dilute this in your spray bottle. Plush Puppy, if you can't find Pure Paws, if Pure Paws is gonna break my heart and go away, um, then my next choice would be Plush Puppy. Um, for those of you who have the option to find any of these items still available, Pure Paws Texture Spray, or Texture, these little granules, um, in your wire-coated breeds, or actually anything that needs a little volume in their coat, phenomenal! Um, I'm gonna start crying now. Um, okay. Another brand that we're all familiar with and happy with and has some phenomenal products, if I could only get my lefts and rights correct. This is Chris Christensen. No, it's not. This is number one all systems. Sorry, I lied. Number one all systems, this Shazam. Again, for anyone who has some staining on their white dogs, amaze balls. Um, it is a clear gel. I can even open this container. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't used it in ages. Um, nope, it's all gone. Clear gel that you can use on your stained areas. Hot dry it with a hot dryer. And then condition the hell out of it. So number one, all systems, another option. And here we have Chris Christensen. Chris Christensen, another brand that we're all, if we're not, we should be familiar with. This happens to be their cholesterol product for um, oh, coats that you want to keep in condition. It is a conditioner. It also will help hold the, the coat in place if you have leg hair, for example. This is what we use for wire hair pointers when we're 
getting their legs to be just so. Okay? But it is designed as a conditioner. I've used it as a conditioner many, many times. Before we get too far down the road, some basic hygiene. Chlorohex for their ears. When you clean their ears, use your ear cleaner. I prefer the Triz Ultra. Use the ear cleaner and then use the Chlorohex. Amaze balls. Um, will help heal anything. I had it heal um, a surgical implant um, when it's stitches pulled and I use that and it healed with no problem. Um, teeth. Can, can I talk to you as someone who judges dogs these days? Um, dirty teeth are just disgusting. Like I actually have to look in that dog's mouth. Um, you need to look at the, at the molars guys. If they're green and yellow and gross, nobody's, nobody's really interested. This is a great way to help keep them up without having to actually use a toothbrush. You can just put your pad on your finger and wipe the mouth clean. Okay. Hey, Laura, Gabriella wants to know, do you have a reference sheet somewhere with all your favorite grooming products? Um, Gabrielle, I do not, but um, it's not a bad plan. I could probably do something like that to add as an appendum, uh, addendum, yeah. append appendix, some yeah. <laughs> one of those to, to our event from tonight. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, I know Natalie had talked to me about trying to get um, Amazon backlinks to all this stuff. I'm so bad at this. So fortunately, hopefully someone smarter than me will figure this out and we'll be able to get you links actually to go buy all this stuff. Um, for those of you with short-coated breeds, honest to God, if I could just get this right. Um, Ridgebacks, Manchesters, great stuff. Mink oil, spray a little bit on your hands, rub on the dog, rub them down with your hound brush, bada bing, bada boom. They're all shiny and pretty. Uh, okay, another one. This is actually human product. I don't recommend a lot of human products, but this um, was recommended to me by one of my mentors in Kaisons. And this was incredible for lift in the, in the Spitz breeds, any of the double coated breeds that you really need to get a little lift on your coat. Maybe you're a little light on coat, what have you. Um, this stuff incredible. I couldn't believe dump it in just a tiny, tiny little amount roots, brush it up. Boom. Big hair. Big sexy hair, I might add. It says right here. Big sexy hair. Uh, what else we got here? Oh! Oh! oh. Wire coated breeds again, or any breed that you need to have a little texture in your coat. Harsh coat chalk. This is actually my favorite. There's many, many brands. I really, really like this one. Brushes in nice. Don't forget, you'll need to have a chalk brush little bristle brush looks like so if you use white chalk and a colored chalk make sure make sure that you have a different color brush for each chalk mm, pro tip Laura Ian wants to know do you worry about judges feeling the texture powder in the coats um, super great question in when I use any grooming product I do my own touch test Okay, so I'm trying to back far enough away that you guys can actually see me. <laughs> um, so I touch their legs. I touch the anything that I put product in, I touch it. I need to be sure that no product is coming off on my hands. Um, I will sometimes hit a dog with a force dryer real quick to blow out any extra. Um, harsh coat chalk is a, a great example of something that you can put on the dog's legs, and then blow any extra out. If you use the cholesterol first to create a base, you put the chalk in on top of the cholesterol, brush it in into the desired shape, if you will, um, and then spray it lightly with everybody's favorite, Chris Christensen, Thick and Thicker. Um, there's lots of other hairsprays. If you're a poodle person, you have um, special poodle hairspray everybody's got a special hairspray that's my go-to um, and if you do those things you are going to be less likely to have anything come off on your hands 
So be aware, don't overdo, understand that the rules are any foreign substance in the dog's coat is a DQ, so don't make it obvious. Some judges care, some judges don't. Don't make a mistake and find the one that does. Okay? Um, okay, other things. Probably the single least um, valued item, most undervalued item, water and a spray bottle. Okay? That is designed to, when a dog is cold, it puffs up its hair. <laughs> yeah. So all your double-coated dogs, your Aussies, anything that you want the hair to stand up, that works. Anything with a curled coat, a Portuguese water dog, an Irish water spaniel, uh, uh, um, any of those sort of breeds that you want to have a tight curl, a little light spritz will recurl the coat. Spray bottle of water can be used when you're in a ring with carpet and the dog's slipping and you need the dog to have better traction. If you dampen the paw pads, the little horny stuff opens up and they are able to get a better grip on the surface. So they're not gonna slip as badly. So you'll notice people with a spray bottle of water. All right, Listerine, another. I, Kim's coming to visit us, so maybe you can check on that. Um, Listerine is another one of those unbelievably undervalued products. Listerine in a 50-50 um, solution, just straight up Listerine, dude. Straight up, right? But you know what it says here on the bottle? Anti-gingivitis, anti-plaque, it's actually somewhat antibacterial. And particularly when you're talking about um, breeds with beards, okay, um, breeds that you're gonna hand strip, any of those sorts of things, the Listerine will act as a mild cleanser. And any of the times that you've pulled coat on a wire-coated dog and you've opened up those hair follicles, right, so you're, you're opening yourself up to a folliculitis, light spritz with Listerine, rub with the grain of a coat, with a damp, with a dry towel, and this will help keep you from having infections or problems um, in your hair shafts, in your follicles, okay? Another thing that no one in the world can live without, lives in our spray bottle, whoop, whoop, uh, self-rinse. Self-rinse is, um, oh, the dog had to pee and get stuff on his boy parts or he had a blowout accident, you don't have time for a full bath, whatever it is. Self-rinse is a quick cleaner, does not have to be rinsed out of the dog's coat, and will keep it clean um, in an emergency last minute, okay? Self-rinse, no one should ever leave home without self-rinse. Um, paper towels, I know, seems a little stupid, but handy. And if you have the kind of grooming arm that goes straight up and folds down, you can just slide the, the, the towels right here, so handy. Um, okay, how are we doing here? Good. All right, so now we're going to get to a couple things that I think no one should ever leave home without. Um, in this case, no one should ever leave home without gas -X if they have a breed that's prone to bloat. Any of the bloating breeds. We have gas -X in every room in our house, in every vehicle, and every bag. If the dog looks at you funny, give it a gas X. Not gonna hurt it, and you might very well save its life. Gas X will break up the gas bubbles that are causing the dog to have a discomfort, potentially preventing um, an actual GVD. Okay? Never leave home without gas X. A couple items that I keep around for dogs that you know, we're stressed, haven't had the, the best experience, maybe they're going through a fear period, whatever it might be. Um, these are two different products that are non, um, um, what would I say? Not, they're not drugs, right? We're not trying to drug our dogs, we're just trying to give them a good basis for getting through life. Um, this particular product is used on bulls and it keeps them calm in the mating season. Seems like it might 
be okay. Works great on dogs. Rub it on their nose. Um, another product in the age of, can you see this? There you go. In the age of everything uh, marijuana is free, hemp and, and CBD oil are non uh, drug, right? The non psychoanalytic, THC. yeah, has no THC, won't make your dog sick, but has benefits. This is another one that's very, very useful for your pet, for your dog, for any dog, whether it's a thunderstorm, whatever it might be. Both of these are handy items. Bitches in season, whatever it might be. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got some basics. Now we're gonna get into the more complicated stuff. Everyone should have their dog on the table once a week, minimum. I don't care if you have a whippet. It needs to be on the table once a week, no matter what. Toenails. There's a grinder. There's a toenail clipper. Do what you like. Everybody's got a thing. Um, do their toenails every week. Start when they're tiny babies. I understand some of them won't like it. They don't have to like it. They need to be okay with it. So work with them. Give them a treat after each foot, after each toe, if that's what it takes. Okay? Toenails must be done. If your dog's toenails touch the floor when it's standing up, right? Standing up, toenails are actually touching the floor. You can hear the dog touching the floor with its toenails. They're too long. You are now actually hurting the dog. And the damage that you're going to do to the dog, because toenails are too long, is far greater than the damage that you will do to the dog's psyche by trimming them. Okay? I promise you, if you're strong and brave, your dog will be strong and brave too. We can do an entire episode on how to trim your dog's toenails. I'm just telling you, trim them. Start early. Do it frequently every week. By putting your dog on the table every single week to do nails, uh, check ears, check anal glands, check for lumps and bumps, check for mats, all of those things, you are A, making sure your dog is staying healthy, B, you know, growing that relationship with your dog, which is a big part of the thing. If you do this from the time the dog is eight weeks old, I promise, I promise, it will be okay to be groomed when it's a grown up dog. And if we have time at the end of this, I will show you an example of what I mean by that. Okay? All right, next up. Um, everybody should have, I don't know how well you guys can see this, a force dryer. This happens to be the one I like. It's called the X Power. Got a little movable dial, Ooh, right? Um, helps you get water out of the coat. If you have, again, we could do an entire seminar on how to properly blow dry the dog for your particular coat, for your particular breed, for your particular animal. Um, but getting the water out of your dog after a bath, force dryer is a fabulous tool. Many of you should also have a hot dryer. Not everybody. When I had double coated breeds, they never had a hot dryer. I had a force dryer. So it depends on your breed, depends on your coat. Um, next up. Something that many of us should have. Anybody see this from there? It's your basic clipper. This one happens to be an Oster. Everybody has the one they like. I love the Urco clippers that are like a nine to a 40 in the same blade. I just killed three of them, so I finally just gave it up. <laughs> um, these have, of course, replaceable blades. The larger the number of the blade, the shorter the um, trim on the hair. So if you have a 40 blade, that's almost a surgical cut. Um, if you have a four or a five, it's gonna give you about half an inch of hair left. Um, <clears throat> so many of you will use that. You know, if you're poodle people, clearly you've got 90 million of those blades. Um, if you're someone who's just trimming uh, potty trails and, and underneath of the pads and stuff like that, a 10 blade for 90% of what you need is probably gonna be enough. Obviously, there's exceptions. There's 200 breeds. We're not going to discuss all of their grooming needs in one one hour session. Um, a comb and a brush. Uh, I think that 
so much of the world's problems in life could be solved if we all just used our brushes and our combs properly. It's a very lovely Chris Christensen pen brush with a nice ergonomic handle. Love this one. Um, this is a slicker brush, kind of a beat up one, but you understand what I'm saying. Slicker brush, you're going to use that on anything. It's got short little thingies. There's different um, textures of pins, soft and hard. This one's pretty hard. Um, use it, brush up your legs. You're not going to be getting any mats out with this. You're never going to use this on um, super fragile coats, anything like that. Most people in most breeds are going to find the most use for a good pen brush. Uh, this is another, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Chris Christensen brush. Super nice brush. Thing to know about this, great pro tip that um, was on Pure Dog Talk some time ago from Allison Foley again, leading at Show Dog Academy. Um, keep your brushes in the boxes they came in, right? Protect these pens. Once these pens are bent, broken, spindled, and mutilated, they're actually going to break the coat and they're going to be of little or no value. And then you're going to have a comb. This is a big old poodle comb, but it shows you double sides, single sides. A good steel comb will solve 90% of the world's problems in almost every breed. Certainly not applicable for a whippet. Okay, a couple different kinds of options for your bristle brushes. This is conceivably one of my most treasured items. This is a pen brush with a little boar bristle in the middle. Um, I use this on back coats. I use this on beards on the wire coated dogs. This is a phenomenal tool. Separates the hair nicely. This is a copper infused bristle brush. Um, as you can see, badly worn um, that I've used on back coats on wire coated breeds for, mm, I don't know, 10 plus years. Um, those items are incredibly, incredibly handy. If you have a Whippet, there we go, or any of the shorter, Manchester, anything with a Ridgeback, anything with shorter hair that you need to get a little bit of shedding done on, these little rubber squeegee brushes, fabulous. Cheap AF. Little rubber, doo -doo 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 -doo, right? Scrub with the grain of the hair, pulls the coat right out, get those things shedded out super fast. This item comes from the feed store. This is what's called a lava block. In horses, it's called a bot block. It is a little tiny chunk of pumice stone, and you can use this in horses. We use it to take the flies' eggs off their legs, but in dogs, we use it to take fuzzy hair off their ears, off of any place we don't want anything little fuzzy, downy stuff we don't want it to be. You can hear, right, what that feels like. You have to be careful. You can really, if you're digging in there, you can cut your dog, so be careful with these. But another handy item. Another thing that you can pick up while you're at the tack store, I don't happen to have... I don't happen to have a bottle of it handy, but you can pick up some Cowboy Magic. Um, anybody who has um, dogs with feathering, right? Coated dogs with feathering that might be getting into something <clears throat> they shouldn't be, or snow, or furs, or you name it. Cowboy Magic, um, particularly um, their, what's it called, detangling, detangling product um, is amazing. It's a silicone treats, coats the hair, everything brushes right out, wash the hell out of the coat after you've used it, and then condition the hell out of the coat, right? The silicone is not good for the dog's coat, but it will help you get crap out of the dog's coat um, without losing as much hair as you might. The other thing that you can pick up at the feed store, and this is just the handiest little item, for those of you who have short-coated breeds that you'd like to remove whiskers on, this is a whisker trimmer that we use on horses. You can see these little teethy things, right? There's a blade right above them. Run that down the dog's muzzle. Whiskers trimmed. Don't have to cut their tongue off. It's 
amazing. For those of you who have ever tried to trim whiskers with a scissor and cut the tongue on the dog in the process right before you go to the group ring, hi, pick me. Um, it's, it's a lifesaver, I'm gonna tell you. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna encourage you to spend a lot of money on, as much money as you have available to you, is your scissors. Everybody's gonna need scissors at some level, okay? Um, these are curves. These are just like little, I don't know, five inch curves, something like that. Um, you want to look for something that has good balance in your hands. Everybody's got a different balance point. Um, again, always remember, we're not using, these are not um, scissors like you'd use in school, right? The important part is the ring finger does the work. These are old sticky uh, scissors. Ring finger does the work. You put the ring finger in here. You don't use them with your middle finger. Ring finger does the work. Scissors rest on your index finger. Thumb is for stability, right? Eh. Thinning shears. These are single-sided. Fabulous. These happen to be a bent shank thinning shear that I've had people threaten my body to take from me. <laughs> they are amazing. I've never found them again. I bought them by 25 plus years ago. Fabulous pair of thinning shears. I think I've sharpened them once. Um, another fancier version of the curves, right? Again. Okay. You want to be able to have them move smoothly, keep them sharp. Don't cut wet hair with your good scissors. Keep a pair of crappy scissors just for that purpose. Same with your blades. Don't run your clipper blades on wet coat unless you want to replace them. Um, keep a crappy blade that you do just that with. Next items on the agenda, stripping knives. Those of you who have wire cutted breeds, um, you do not want these to be sharp. This particular knife is, again, probably 15, 20 years old. It's very dull. does not cut the hair. If you have any doubt that you can do this uh, pull coat, right? So you're pulling, right? No bent, no motion in the wrist, no nothing. This is just grip. That's all that is, is to have a grip for your thumb. Um, so find the knife that fits your hand the best. Um, you can put... Uh, tape or uh, 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 vet wrap around here if you're uncertain that you can pull hair without cutting it. You can use the end with your thumb. There are just a couple different shapes and types of knife that might be easy for people to use depending on the hand, depending on the area on the dog they're working on. Um, these are particularly lovely set of knives that one of the patrons actually gave me so um but for quick and easy you can also use this to rake undercoat this little guy coarse bladed stripping knife costs like i don't know 12 bucks um stripping knives like scissors need to fit your hand and what's comfortable to you a couple final items before we actually get to a real life doggy Coat King. This happens to be the giant size. I freaking love this thing. Um, again, I don't even know how many teeth this has. 32. Um, it's You can hurt the dog if you're not careful, right? These are hooked and sharp. But if you pull straight, don't pull straight, you can pull a lot of undercoat with this thing and not break the top coat. If you have a double coated breed, this is not the tool for you. This is a tool for wire coated breeds, anything that you want to pull under coat without breaking the top coat. And this little item is the coolest thing. It's just a like a mat splitter rake, but it has this squishy rubber handle. So for those of us with really bad hands, um, when you're trying to get through something that's matted up, puppy coat, coat change, anything like that, handy little item. Always remember when you are brushing your dog, uh, particularly 
line brushing, doing anything with coat, you're going to have two items in your hand. You're going to have a spray bottle. We're going to say that this spray bottle has conditioner. At the very least, it has water. Ideally, it has a heavily diluted conditioner. Spritz, right? Let's see. Nice spray. Right. Spray, right? Brush. And those two things go together. Lift up, brush, lift up, brush, spray. Do not brush dry coat. Do not brush dirty coat. Okay. So in the scheme of things, of all the things that Auntie Laura has in her chat box, a um, couple other sort of miscellaneous items. A towel, right? Always have a towel. Dry the dog off. Put it on the table. Whatever it is. And this little handy item back here, multi-plug. Take it with you to the dog show. Never lose your cord. Write your name on it. Um, and you can't see it back here, but make sure you have a mirror in your grooming area at home, in your dog room, in your kennel, in your what have you. And then for at the dog show, if you have a dog, pretty much any dog, up to and including a whippet. Everybody needs tubs. You have two of these, a little warm water, put a dibby dab, like a quarter size dibby dab of shampoo in one. This one says rinse. In the rinse, I put a dibby dab of conditioner, sponges, just straight up, you know, 25 cent sponges. And you can table bath your dog on day, you know, two through seven, right? so that they're not grimy and gross for the judge to feel when they go over them. Um, if you are putting any kind of product in your dog's coat, any kind of product in your dog's coat, it should be washed out at the end of every day. Otherwise, the dog's coat is going to break and look like hell, and you will be sad. Um, when you wash the dog out, most of the dogs will need to be dried all the way down to the skin. Some, if you're just doing legs, because that's the only place that you have product, can be towel dried. Um, some of the wire coated breeds like that. Okay, while well, we're doing a little table change, do we have questions, Stacy? Yes. <clears throat> uh, Gabriella asked, she's heard some people say that the cholesterol can be drying. For the coat, I'm assuming, Gabriella, um, have you found this to be true? Um, Gabriella, uh, uh, cholesterol is actually a conditioner. It's literally, its job is to be a hair conditioner for women. That's what it was designed for. We have transitioned it into use in dogs, but its original purpose was as a heavy conditioner for women. If you're going to use con cholesterol, the issue with cholesterol is that if you leave it in the coat for more than a day or so, it's going to collect dirt. If you're going to use cholesterol to condition, you put it in, you leave it in for a day or two, you wash it out, and you dry, and then you put new cholesterol. Um, there are better leave-in conditioners that we have today. A lot of people still use it from the olden days um, when that was a pretty common and, and and popular conditioning item, but we have much, much better leave-in conditioners these days. Next. Ingrid mentioned the importance of branding your tools or brushes. Indeed, Ingrid. Um, and this is a perfect story. You will see that this brush has my name on it. Um, from when I was handling dogs, I retired five years ago. Um, this brush was loft somehow by some assistant somewhere who shall rename nameless at a dog show and someone picked it up and took it with them and literally five years later I got my brush back that I love more than life itself. So I'm saying write your name on everything. Uh, use tape. You see this little guy? This little guy I couldn't write my name on because it's dark. It's got my tape on it. Um, and I wrote my name on the tape, although that's worn off. Well, it even does have my name on it. 
Yeah, I'm not sure you can see it. There you go. Um, label everything. Uh, people, you forget things. People have white fingers. I mean, let's just be real. Shit happens. Um, best way to resolve that is to label everything and try and keep it from walking off. Next. Any other items? Um, Jen mentioned she carries, like we do, the GI emergency kits. She's got gas uh, probiotics. Um, what is that, Jen? Kalen pectin? Kalen pectin, right. Yeah. Um, so there's lots and lots of medical things that we keep in the box. I always have gas -X. Um, I often, um, no matter well, so much anymore because I don't travel as much, but I always had a bloat kit, straight up bloat kit in my um, med box, an entire box that was lived in my motorhome that was designated for medication. So in that box, there would be um, some cephaloxin, some amoxicillin, some uh, metronidazole, and just a couple days worth in terms of if I've got an emergency, I need to deal with something right away before I can get to a veterinarian. If you're able to do that, that's a really super great way to go. Um, have a first aid kit. Go to Vimeo and look up um, K9911, and, and there's six sessions of Marty and I talking about um, your first aid kit, what should be in it, what you can treat, what you can't, etc. cetera. Um, so those are all things that I would absolutely have on hand. Um, anybody else before we start with our doggy? No, I think that's okay. what we've got for now. We have a special guest. We do have a special guest this evening. I was... I had to I had to think long and hard about who was going to be the special guest for tonight, but I decided that the, the everybody's the floor, favorite. Yep, the uh, Blake. Blake. Uh, special guest for this evening would be Blake, and uh, he has been a special guest for a number of grooming sessions over the years, and because he's so atypical for a Sheba, he's my favorite dog to show off because I just love him. And because he is an example of what you can do when you start young with these dogs, right? Uh, hi. Oh, yeah. I love you, too. He is... Stay. Um, this is a... Gosh, I don't know. 11-year-old dog. Hasn't been shown in some time. He's a pretty good fellow. Stay. He is definitely not... A typical Shiva. So anyone who's ever met a Shiva Inu in a groom shop, at a dog show, anywhere else, knows that they can be pretty horrible about their toenails. And so I'm going to use Blade as my demo dog of why the dog doesn't have to be a jackass for their toenails. Now, Blade and I have had many conversations about this over the years. And every now and then we have to like look at each other in the eye to discuss how we're going to behave while we're having our toenails done. But as you can see, we understand this whole process. One of the things, and again, I worked in a, a pet grooming, so I've worked with a lot of unruly dogs over the years. One of the things that I have learned over time, when you're trimming your dog's toenails, start with the back nails. For whatever reason, they're just easier for the dogs to deal with. When you pick the dog's foot up, don't crank it all the way up here. Just because it's more comfortable for you doesn't make it more comfortable for the dog. All right? I keep the dog's foot as low to the table as I can and still be able to see it. Stop. Helps if his tail doesn't get in the way. Um, this particular dog does not like a Dremel. So we're just going to use the clippers because that's what makes him happy. Um, and as you can see, as you can see, this is straight up black magic. Because a sheep of it will stand there and hold his little paw up to have you trim his toenails is, I don't know, against the natural universe. Um, this has come, stop. Okay, you want to sit down? That's fine. You can stay. Okay. Um, this has come because 
the breeder, Susan Morris Jones, who produced this dog, started with him when he was a puppy. And I, stop. And I have continued with him every week since then. And he doesn't love it. I mean, you know, not every dog will just lie there and hold their toes out. Hey, one more super quick question regarding the powder. Yes. So when you do the, Ian wants to know, when you do the powder for a double-coated dog, should that also be bathed out every day? If you're chalking their legs. So, Ian, you have left hand? I don't remember. I think a finished left hand. Okay. Um, if, you're, if you're chalking their legs, right, and, you, and you're putting chalk in their legs, cholesterol and chalk in their legs, yeah. I would wash that out. Even that short, so like the short hair on the front of these legs, if you're putting product in there, wash it out. All it's going to do is collect or irritate the dog's skin. Um, it's just not, it's not necessarily a good thing for the dog to be left in for an extended period of time. Now, I am going to turn your toe boss and you're going to be okay with it. Okay. And do you see the difference between the front and the rear? Like, He's not horrible for his friends, but he's not nearly as quiet for his friends as he is for his rear. Okay. Yes, do not try this at home. This is not something you do with every Shiba Inu. This is a dog that I know very, very well, that I know is not going to come at me. Stop. Stop. And so I, I think that, you know, the thing that people, I see so many people get just, you know, they see the dog act like this and like, oh my God, he's, he's stressed out. He's terrified. He's not terrified. He's mad. He doesn't want to. And so if you just talk to him for a minute and move on, it's fine. Um, the dog is not having any more trauma from this than you would have from having your toe fingernails turned. Stop. 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 Thank you. Um, it doesn't hurt them. Uh, it hurts them if you cut it too quick. And nobody wants to do that. That is not our goal. But at the same time, people um, become so concerned that they're going to hurt the dog, understandably, that their stress makes the dog stressed. And so if you'll notice, I'm not worried about this. And if I'm not worried about it, he's not worried about it. And that's something that we can all take as an example when we're working with our dogs. I think you all know, oh, for Pete's sake, didn't even come close. You can all see him. We all know that if we turn the toenail over, even if it's a black nail, we can see where the quick ends and where it's safe to trim the nail without cutting into the quick and hurting the dog. It's like a, looking at a canoe and the part that doesn't have the quick will be empty. And the part that does have the quick will have what looks like, you know, flesh in there. So avoid that part. Helps if you turn the toenail over and you can see that. Okay, so there you go, black magic. Yes, you can trim even a Shiba Inu's toenails. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit. How are we doing on time? We've got seven minutes. Any other questions? Jim? Any other questions while we get started doing some brushing here? Questions, questions, questions. Remember I said we don't brush dry hair. And while Blade has not had a bath per se, he's a super tidy dog, so we're just going to go with he's pretty clean.
And I always, again, anytime I'm brushing any dog, I start at the bottom and work my way up. And he's not ready to drop coat yet, but he's getting there. He can see the little bit of tufting. And so if we want to talk about double coated breeds for a minute, and we can talk about line brushing, we can talk about how to get a dog to move through its coat, blow, or even just roll their coat, um, all of which can be done. So Akitas, Shibas, any of your double coated breeds, if you are campaigning them, if you just can't bear the thought of losing a month or two to no coat, you can essentially roll the coat. And so you'll notice what I'm doing here, if you can see it, maybe I'll try it on this side. So we're doing sort of a modified version of line brushing, right? Left hand pulls up, right hand brushes down. The important part is that you have got to, got to, got to, got to brush to the skin. And so the way that you can do that is if you pull the hair with your hand and then brush in the direction that the hair grows and you have to look and see the skin. Uh, this is equally important and you can see spring is coming. Can you see it? For those of you who know double coated dogs, spring is coming. It's almost here. There's hair in my brush. Um, this is also equally important when you are washing and drying your dog. You have to get the dog wet to the skin. You have to get the shampoo to the skin. You have to rinse to the skin and you have to dry to the skin. Um, we just had the um, podcast this, this week with Marty yesterday's podcast was about skin and how you get hot spots. And the way you get hot spots is that you don't rinse to the skin and you don't dry to the skin. And so it's really important to practice, right? Getting to your dog's skin when you're brushing, no matter what tool you need to use. So start with a pen brush. Now I'm gonna take a comb and I'm gonna do the same thing. Pull the coat back and pull the comb through, you can see I'm still getting coat, right? So this is often more than just a single process. If you're attempting to roll coat in these double coated breeds, you're gonna go through the entire dog with a pen brush, and you're gonna go through it with a comb, you can see this, right? And you're gonna pull all of this coat as soon as you start to see it coming. And I, you can see these little tufties, right? Little bits of tufties. Tells me it's coming on. So if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this every single day. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna try and roll the coat. I'm gonna start with a warmer than average bath. Most baths that we give our dogs should be tepid at best. Preferably not ice cold, although we've all done it and definitely not hot, hot, tepid, like cooler than your bath water, tepid. And if I want to start a dog getting the coat out and starting to roll it in a double coated dog, I'm gonna give it a warmer than average bath. I'm gonna force dry it into the skin, brush while I dry, and then I'm gonna get them on the table. And I'm gonna have the spray bottle of water in the refrigerator. And I'm gonna take ice cold water as his brush out spray every single day. And every single day, I'm gonna go through every inch of this dog and I'm gonna get out whatever coat is coming out. Because you guys need to remember, new coat cannot come in until the old coat is gone. And so if you're rolling the coat in a double coated dog, you gotta get this crack that's trying to fall out, out. And the sooner and faster and more consistently you do that, 
the more effective your results are going to be in ruling that coat and keeping them from going to, <clears throat> as we say in Shiva's coyote ugly, which legitimately happens. Even Blake in his day has been coyote ugly. All right, you guys, we're about out of time. Thank you all for joining us. I will work on getting us some links and affiliate links and all the cool things that I don't know how to do. I say we, I mean Natalie. Uh, <laughs> um, don't forget, please, 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 please go to puredogtalk.com. Go to the top of the page, click on the survey, fill it out. Get entered for drawing for a prize. Go to puredogtalk.com backslash patron and join the patrons because we've got three retreats coming up this year. We've got one in Tacoma in July. We've got one in Chicago in August with the International Kennel Club of Chicago. And we have one down around Austin, Texas that we're planning in October. So lots of opportunities to get together and hang out with what is quite legitimately the best community of dogs. All right, you guys, lab at five. Have a good one.